Hello and good evening again. This is part four of Shadow of the Swastika, picking up right where I left off on part three. And this is, I'm going to overlap just a couple of sentences. DuPont's support of Hitler extended into the very heart of the Nazi war machines as well. According to Heigman, Heigham, to several other researchers, General Motors, under the control of DuPont, family of Delaware played a part in cooperation with the Nazis. Between 1932 and 1939, bosses of General Motors poured $30 million into IG Farben plants. Further, Heigman informed us that by the mid-1930s, General Motors was committed to full-scale production of trucks, armored cars, and tanks in Nazi Germany. Research, researchers Morton Mintz and Jerry S. Cohen, in their book, Power Inc. described the DuPont GM Nazi relationship in these terms. In 1929, the DuPont controlled GM acquired the largest automobile company in Germany, Adam Opel AG. This predestined and subsidiary to become important to the Nazi war effort in a heavily documented study presented by the Senate Subcommittee on Antitrust and Monopoly in February of 74, 1974, Bradford C. Snell, an assistant and subcommittee counselor, wrote, GM's precipitation, participation in Germany's preparation for the war began in 1935. That year, its Opel subsidiary corporate with the Reich in locating a new heavy truck facility in Brandenburg, which military officials advised would be less vulnerable to enemy air attacks. During the succeeding year, GM supplied the Win Winnermack with Opel Blitz trucks from the Brandenburg complex. For these and others, the contributions to the Nazis' wartime preparation, GM Chief Executive for Overseas Operations James Mooney was awarded the Order of the German Eagle, first class by Adolf Hitler himself. DuPont GM Nazi cooperation, according to Snell, included the participation in Standard Oil of New Jersey, now Exxon, in one very important arrangement. GM and Standard Oil of New Jersey formed a joint subsidiary with the giant Nazi chemical cartel, IG Farben, named Ethel G. M. B. H., now Ethel and Corp., which, according to Snell, provided the mechanized German armies with synthetic tri tetri tetraethyl fuel let it gas during 1936-39 at the urgent request of Nazi officials who realized that German scarce petroleum reserves would not satisfy our demand. GM and Exxon joined with German chemical interest in the election of the lead tetra tetraethyl plants. According to the captured German records, these facilities contributed substantially to the German war effort. The fact that the, since the beginning of the war we could produce lead tetraethyl is entirely due to the circumstances that shortly before the American DuPont GM and Standard Oil had presented us with a production plant complete with experimental knowledge. Without lead tetraethanol, the present method of warfare would have been unthinkable. About the same time the DuPonts were serving the Nazis' cause in Germany, they were involved in a fascist plot to overthrow the United States government. Along with friends of the Morgan Bank, see the bankers are involved, the General Motors in the early 1934, writes Hegman, Certain DuPont backers financed a coup that, that would overthrow the president, and with the aid of a $3 million funded army of terrorists, the object was to force Roosevelt to take orders from businessmen as part of a fascist government or face the alternative of imprisonment and execution. Hyman reports that DuPont men originally held an urgent series of meetings with the Morgans to choose who would lead the bizarre conspiracy. They finally settled on one of the most popular soldiers in America, General Smedley Butler of Pennsylvania. Butler was approached by fascist attorney General McGuire, an official of the American League, Legion, who attempted to recruit Butler into the role of an American Hitler. Butler was horrified, but played along with McGuire until a short time later he notified the White House of the plot. Roosevelt considered 
having the leaders of the House of Morgan and DuPont arrested, but feared that it would create an unthinkable national crisis in the midst of the Depression and perhaps another Wall Street crash, Roosevelt decided the best way to defuse the plot was to expose it and leak the story to the press. The newspapers ran the story of the attempted coup on the front pages but generally ridiculed it as absurd and preposterous, but an investigation by Congressional Committee on Un-American Activities, 74th Congress, first session, House of Representatives investigation of Nazis and other propaganda was began later in the same year. It was four years, continued Hagraham, before the committee dared to publish its report in a White House paper that was marked for restricted circulation. They were forced to admit that certain persons made an attempt to establish a fascist organization in this country. The committee was unable to verify all the prominent statements made by the General Butler, but the administration that the plan that in, but the administration that the entire plan was deadly and intent was not accompanied by the imprisonment of anybody. Further investigation disclosed that over a million people had been guaranteed to join the scheme and that arms and munitions necessary would have been supplied by Remington, a DuPont subsidiary. The names of important individuals and groups involved in the conspiracy were suppressed by the committee, but later revealed by Sedell's a Philadelphia Record reporter, Paul French, and Julius Archer, author of the book, The Plot to Seize the White House. Included were John W. Davis, attorney for J.P. Morgan Banking Group, Robert Sterling Clark, Wall Street broker and hired to the Singer sewing machine fortune, William Doyle, American Legion official, and the American Liberty League backed by executives from J.P. Morgan and Company, Rockefeller Interest, E.F. Hutton, and DuPont Control General Motors. Now do you see why everything is so screwed up today that it's this, it's it's snuff food, it's fugal. We're in fugal. You know what that means. You know, fricked up beyond all belief. And and this is this is and it's all done because we have Nazis running the country today. We thought we got rid of the Nazis and fascism. Oh no, they just moved to America and became Americans and now they're in power to take our government. This is the end of part four and I will get back to part five after a little bit of reading this over a little more and, and getting the words and pronunciations right. I think I kind of screwed up with some of the pronunciation of names, but I will say the one thing, if we allow this government to continue on the way it's going right now, we will be in a fascist dictator police state. I mean, there are already rumors above rumors that Bush may just go ahead and, and attack Iran, nuke them, and then, you know, cancel the elections and to stay in for another year or so as dictator until they conquer the Middle East and there will be all these corporations that control the media when you listen to the talking heads on TV that's exactly what they are they're just talking heads they have no fact they're only being they're, they're scripted they know only what they're told to say and people will listen to that because they're thinking that the TV's for real I'd like people to see the movie from I think it was 74 called Network it was a satire at the time but when you watch it now it's not a satire it's for real and I think people should actually see the movie, rent it, if you can find it at the rental place, and watch it, and see what we're under today. We've been brainwashed into believing in everything that's told to us. We're, we're told a hundred year war is good for America. We're broke. We have no money. We're going we're gonna to go into a third world country in no time. They're going to they're gonna break the back of what's left of the middle class and we're all going to be just rich and poor and the rich are going to be the corporations and the poor is going to be you and me so until the next chapter be good or be good at it <laughs>